Uh, let's pray. Lord, we thank you for your word, which is before us, and we ask that by your spirit and by your grace, you would open our hearts to hear your voice and to see you more clearly and to, to love you more dearly and to follow you more nearly. In Jesus' name we pray it. Amen. We're going to be talking about faith today, and it's a very heavy, somber, solemn topic. Well, sort of. <laughs> and so I thought I'd loosen you up with a joke. Just <laughs> and that's a very Irish thing, you know, to, to kind of make, have light and have a party and then get real serious about something, like a fight. <laughs> and then back to partying again. Uh, so, yeah, sermon is kind of like a fight, so let's start it off with a little lightness. Well, th this is the story about an Irish nun. And this Irish nun... Um, she, uh, you, you know, there's a lot of nun, un, nuns in Ireland because it's very, a very Catholic place, especially in the south. The southern part is uh, the Republic of Ireland. When we, w we were there last year and we were in this little village and we kind of expected that everybody, you know, 99.9% .9 of everybody was Catholic and that wasn't true. And in the little village, there was actually a huge Anglican church, a little Methodist church, which I attended, and a Baptist church someplace that I didn't find. And of course, the big Catholic church in the main, main part of town. But I digress. <laughs> so there was this Irish nun, and she was dressed all, you know, in nunnish attire, and uh, she was a, a home health, uh, you know, a, a home health care person. So she, she was kind of like a nurse, but she went into homes, kind of like our, uh, what do you call them, Victorian order, that kind of a person. So she, she's driving down the road, and uh, she runs out of gas. So the, fortunately, the gas station was not very far from her, so she, she could just walked over to the gas station, and, and she asked them for a little, a little, uh, uh, Jerry, a jerry can of petrol, thank you. Jerry, a wee jerry can of petrol, please. And, uh, they, uh, they couldn't give it because they'd already lent it out to somebody else. And they said, you'll have to wait a bit. And so she said, no, no, I, I have to get to my client, so um, uh, I'll think of something else. So she, she goes back to her car, she rummages around, and all that she could find was a bedpan. So, so, she, goes back to the <laughs> so she goes back to the garage, she gets the bedpan, fills it up with gas, and heads back to the car, and she's, she's pouring the petrol into, into the car, and along come these two Irish fellows, and they're kind of looking one to the other, and at the nun pouring the petrol, she says, one says to the other, Bagara, now that's faith. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay, so we're going to talk about faith. What? <laughs> what is faith? Um, what is faith? And we, we may have a lot of different concepts about what it is. It's a word that gets bandied about quite a bit. Uh, kind of like other words that we, we kind of would like to have exclusive control of as Christians, but we, we don't. <laughs> and the whole world has, a, has these other concepts, like the words hope and love. So I always, when I'm talking with couples that are about to get married, I talk about love, because you know, the world as a, as a whole has this idea of love, which is falling in love and that feeling of love, which is, which is a wonderful thing. But the Bible idea of love is more like, it's got that included, but it's way more about the sacrificiality of it, how, how you, you be a servant to another, and you, you, know, you, you, you give of yourself, even w without expecting anything in return. Uh, so, so, you know, we talk about those kinds of things. So the word faith is another case in point. The world in general uses this word one way, but the Bible uses it in another. So the world in general, which is ourselves, <laughs> we talk about all the world's, for instance, we talk about all the world's faiths, plural. And when we think about that, the world's faiths are their religions. They're, you know, whether they're Muslims or Buddhists or Christians or, or, or Jew, Jews or whatever. Uh, we think, you know, their, their system of beliefs, their belief system. And uh, the Bible has a, a little hint of that, but really that's not at all in the, in the idea of faith in the Bible. At one point, Paul does say, he says, uh, there are things like this, where he says, I have, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith. He's kept the faith, by which he means the Christian faith. He's kept, he's kept true to his, his belief in Christ uh, you know, through the years. So it's, it's a hint of that. We also talk about faith in a person or a system around us. So uh, you know, in varying degrees, we, have, we, we need to have faith, I suppose, and we, we have faith, and we use the word faith, in people. So we have faith in, say, our doctor. We might have faith in our dentist. We might have faith in our minister, <laughs> or not. We might have faith in our hairdresser. Um, you know, 
<laughs> or our banker. Or, so so to, to varying degrees, we find we have faith in people around us or in the systems around us. So we might have faith in, I don't know, the healthcare system. We might have faith in uh, the municipal council. Uh, we might have faith in the United Church of Canada, which is a, you know, a, a denominational organization. So t we may have faith in that kind of thing. And there's, there's hardly any of that in the Bible at all. The Bible is really not big on uh, you know, getting us to, to put our trust wholeheartedly in human systems or in, in people in general. In fact, Jesus, it says of Jesus that he entrusted himself to no one because he knew what was in the heart of everyone, which is interesting. Now, we have to trust one another to, to degrees. Or we, we, can't, we can't operate as a society. But I think we know what, what they're saying. So, so the gist of the Bible always, when it talks about faith, is pretty much always to do with God himself. And here's what it actually says. So what is the Bible definition? And it's one of the words which we have an almost a very precise and concise little definition in Hebrews 11.1. 1. So if you're wondering, so you want to remember this, or write this down, whatever, and when you wonder what faith is, uh, when your faith gets frayed, the choir just sang about faith, <laughs> that was one of the lines in the, in the anthem today, sometimes the faith gets frayed. And if your faith gets frayed or whatever, what is faith? You, you go back to uh, uh, Hebrews 11.1, 1, and here it is, the definition. Now faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. Okay? Now I just, I, I, I just basically want you to stew on this a little bit today. Because it's probably not what we usually think of when we think of faith. Faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. It's a very strong word. It's a word that's more like knowledge. Of a, it's, it's a kind of knowledge. It's a certainty. It's an assurance. Um, another, I've got a couple of other versions. This is, of course, an English translation of the original Greek. Um, and there are different, actually different versions of the, the, the version we're using. This is the New International Version. The one I've got here says, now faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. And elsewhere it says, now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. And there's, there's a version called the Amplified Bible. I don't know if you've ever heard of the Amplified. Someone was telling me recently that they, they really like it because it really amplifies things. <laughs> it's like takes the little few words that we have in the Greek and, and, and adds all the possible connotations and meanings that it could have. So here's the Amplified. Now faith is the assurance, the confirmation, the title deed of the things we hope for being the proof of things we do not see and the conviction of their reality. Faith perceiving as real fact what is not revealed to the senses. And I thought that, that last little line was particularly helpful. You know, faith perceiving as real fact what is not revealed to the senses. So faith, according to this definition, which is the biblical definition, is kind of like a way of seeing things that you can't see other, in, in an, any other way. It's a way of, of kind of tapping into uh, an invisible world. That you might even say the supernatural world. You might even say the kingdom of God. So it's a way of kind of tapping into that. And it, you know, I, I kind of think of it then as, as a, an extra faculty. You know, if we, get, if the, we have the five faculties, you know, what does, you know, I can't remember. Hearing, seeing, tasting, touching, smelling. Uh, so those are our five physical faculties. So if we think of a, a, an extra faculty, like a sixth sense almost, that, that we can have that, that allows us to perceive things that we hope for and, and understand and know things that we cannot see. So that's what the Bible definition of it, of it is. Um, it's a way, it's kind of maybe an inner eye, is a, I suppose another, I, I hesitate to use that word, but you know, there's, I think there's some truth to that. Well, what do we have around us that, that's kind of like this? A way of seeing or picking up on things that you can't pick up with, with your, your physical senses. And there's a great, there's, there's a great uh, metaphor in uh, things like radio. <laughs> so, so for instance, we can't see it, can't touch it, can't taste it, can't hear it, whatever, but the radio waves are just, th this room is replete with radio waves and television waves. And I'm just gonna see if we have a cell phone here. A little bit of cell phone waves. <laughs> Electromagnetic uh, radiation of various kinds and various uh, frequencies which we use. So, um, 
that, that's a kind of, kind of like what the Bible is presenting here as what faith is like. It's, it's kind of like we're like receivers for uh, not electromagnetic radiation, but, but truths from God. <laughs> now, some will, th- will, will say that they thought faith was just whatever you believe. If you've got a bunch of beliefs, that's your faith. But that's a very weak, if not uh, erroneous, idea of faith. So, for instance, the guys that, um, the guys that walked down the road and saw the lady with the, the nun with the uh, bedpan pouring, so, so, so th- they were believing something there. I think they were believing that she was turning something into gasoline. <laughs> and, and they were wrong. So they might have believed that. Or, you know, we, last year or in the past year, some Japanese engineers believed that the, uh, the nuclear power plants that they put up near the coast were impervious to tsunamis. They believed it. They were wrong. There's a guy named Harold Camping, who is a pastor. I think he's like 88 or something. You may, you, you've probably heard about this story. You may not remember the name. Harold Camping. And last year, he, ha- he has a following of uh, people that, be- he's like a pa- uh, Anyway, he's a pastor, he's got a following, and he last year announced that uh, Jesus was coming back on May 21st, 2011. And I think subsequently that the end of the world was coming in October of 2011. And you may have heard this story, because he actually had billboards put up all around the states and Canada. I saw one in, uh, in Aurelia, a great big huge billboard, spent millions of dollars promoting this belief. And I forget which one it was. I thought it was October, the, the end of the world. Are you ready? The end of the world is coming October 2011. And of course, he was wrong. He believed it, but he was wrong. So you can, you can believe things, but it turns out they're just, in, in the case of the Japanese uh, uh, engineers, it's wishful thinking. Or you can believe something, and in the case of Harold Camping, it's delusional thinking. So, in, in, you know, it, there's nothing really wrong with wishful thinking, in my thinking. You know, I, I'm full of wishful thinking. <laughs> like, for instance, I, I wish and think that maybe I'll live to be 100 years old. Right? Chances are slim. Chances are slim. <laughs> but, but I, you know, I kind of think maybe I will. So I'm that stubborn. <laughs> uh, but, but, it, but really, that's not, that's not, that's, that might be something I believe, but it's not really faith. It's wishful thinking. And delusional, that's something else altogether, and I've had my share of that. (laughs) Now, if we believe something that our faith tells us is true, this is where we're getting into the tricky fine, fine points here. If we believe something that our faith tells us is true, that's when we have belief and faith working together. 